Welcome back, everyone, to Kaiser Reich. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, as you know, well, pretty much by now in episode 10, my epilogue, epilogue part 2 of us playing here and looking pretty good. The German Empire, we're looking pretty darn fantastic. Uh, the Balkans are looking okay. Uh, the Eastern Europe is looking pretty good. And we're doing alright. But we've invaded Ireland because, well, at this point, I mean, besides being in the Reich's Pact, there's a, a few minor nations in the Entente. Not a huge deal. We're looking pretty good globally, pretty nicely overall. But I figured, you know, Ireland, they need to be under us. And we've got a couple other focuses to read, such as Colonial Rear Guards. Colonialism is a mission of the German Empire, great pride of the Reich. We will not give up the civilizing mission just because of what some liberal activists proclaim. To this end, at least for the foreseeable future, we shall retain our local colonial holdings for as long as we like and invest in our African security greatly. A lot of African miners. Africa is not just some colonial playground. The independent states that have sprung up who have survived through the colonization of Africa, or fight against our colonial masters, could be worthwhile allies and further our interests in the region. Absolutely. But I'll be honest, I don't really feel like taking out Japan in this campaign. Maybe the next one. Because I'm sure I'll come back and do this one uh, at some point, because this is a lot of fun. I like this revamped German focus stream. And we could invade the Russian Republic again. Regime change Poland. Poland be persuaded to reform the government to our liking. We will not tolerate Mavics on our doorstep. Germany demands restoration. Poland resists. Warsaw has refused to heed our warnings. Apparently, they believe that because the king made a difficult choice to abdicate in dire circumstances, any German who tries to engage with them will simply let the people, Polish people, walk all over them. This notion will not last long. This shouldn't take too long. Well, gives a little bit of time. Now I want to see if that, we, they can actually do that. A challenge to control the Suez Canal. The Dominion Canada controls the Suez Canal, a key transport route which connects Europe with our colonies in East Africa and East Asia. They're not aligned with us, so we must threaten them and give them the canal or face destruction. And go ahead. Oh, are we missing stuff here? Oh, planes probably, huh? Well, it's because I deployed as many planes as we possibly had. So we're completely out of fuel now. Not good. Of course, we are using a lot of our ships up as well, too, so what do you expect? Oh, we got Dublin back, huh? Well, that's not ideal. And kill yourself. Very good. Dublin is ours. The fall of Dublin. Goodbye, Ireland. Nice. Now the Poles are going to learn the very hard way of what it means to say no to us. So what happens if we do end up going to war with the good old uh, Entente? I don't necessarily want to go to war with the Entente, but if they leave us no choice, you know, then they leave us no choice. Am I doing it like this? I don't know. It looks nice though. Maybe the Russian Republic and maybe the People's Polish Republic. Go ahead. Pull to your royal aircraft because we can. Sure, why not? Opel. Nice. The fate of Ireland. Pretty much. Become a puppet again. Hugo McNeil. Uh, it's weird that they... We are authoritarian Democrats. But these guys are now paternal autocrats. Interesting how that works. Maybe have a dozen. A lot of African miners. Intervention of the Persian Gulf, which we read last time. Pacify radicalism in Anatolia and the Levant. The once amical regions or regimes in Anatolia and the Levant have been overtaken by anti German corrupting influences. Let's we'll restore responsible governance of these states while we'll suspending our position in the Middle East. The oil must flow, huh? With the control of Rakuza stand in the Kirkuk oil fields, our extraction companies can invest greatly into these regions and reap the rewards. Pacify radicalism in, in, in the Levant, of course, like we read. Uh, 
We have all these. If you want to read this, please go right ahead. Or the Pacific, huh? That would be cool, but we didn't do anything up there either. Anything else we do around here? Not too much. We just spam the bonus route still, though. The Standekammer. Nice. There you go. What an absolute tragedy. Oh, you know what's going on? Just because we can. We have a few planes in the air. We got a few planes here and there. Doesn't look like it's ever enough. Um, most establish a common mechanism for adding new members into the middle of Europa. A stream of the process of ancestral should it blocks numerous economic agreements, which will also add new members into the middle of Europa and expand reach. Or is there anything? Oh, let's do this one first, why not? <clears throat> In the meantime, I'm sure this is costing a crap ton of fuel. Because we have no fuel left. Fantastic. I mean, why do they want to cause so many deaths? I don't understand. 110. 175,000 for literally nothing. Makes literally no sense. Crane, you've already given you a lot. If there's any more, we'll give you. We'll give you more too, but still. Because I'm going to throw you guys on this border. Alright, what we got here? We're done with that one. Also done with this one. Accelerate the collapse of French Africa. The French exiles in Algiers remain a thorn at their side and seek to challenge their dominance in the West. Though it might be a little risky, we can use their instability against them and support African resistance groups which could break the power of these exiles without us lifting a finger. Command and control of Kirku oil fields. The Kingdom of Assyria controls large reserves of oil in the Kirkuk. The fuel of the future, crucial for growing industries. Let's do some enhanced diplomacy and get their government to peacefully concede control of these extractions, ISO cooperations, as well as the Khuzestan oil fields. The Iran controls large reserves of oil in Khuzestan, the fuel of the future. Well, that's pretty much the same thing, so. Of course, Hejaz down here is an American puppet. They're both American puppets, but still. Well, we don't really need to improve relations with Syria, though. Made of Poland. Establish German military rule. Hans on monarchy. Get an effeminate king, huh? A king is noted for his flamboyant jewelry and for keeping the company of artists rather than officers. Doesn't make him very hugely popular with the Poles, but make him less popular with his father, the Kaiser. The Kaheimrat. King showed himself with the predominantly Polish nobility to baptize him in the matter of state. He used to put a good connection to assist the king. This is the Polish Republic. Oh, look at that. Poland's even smaller now. August the 4th. He's a little bit effeminate. Faith of Shelm. Ukraine, you fought bravely. You can, you may have it. The giantest Ukrainian state I've ever seen. 
Alright, so Canada. How, what, what type of relations do we have with them? They like us. We don't care for them, but they kind of like us. And how about you guys? You actually kind of like us too. Let's see. Iran refuses! Iran has both proven to be stubborn and idiotic. They refuse all attempts to negotiate and declare that they do not wish for some violent their economic independence. Perhaps a military solution can force them to surrender. In due time. Suez Crisis. Suez situation has escalated. The Empire of Japan has suddenly joined the conflict over the Suez Canal by guaranteeing their territorial integrity. A threat to intervene if we use military forces to seize the Suez Canal. Uh, we don't know if this is a real threat or not. Uh, but we should tread carefully from here on out, and you'll both be crushed. Ah, the Kingdom of Assyria accepts. The Kingdom of Assyria has excelled right in the wall and surrendered their oil resources to us. Now, the oil can be used for fuel, however growing industry. Poland is loyal and stable, as it should be. Well, I mean, we're pretty much ready to go. It shouldn't take too long to take these guys out. <clears throat> these guys, Golestan Pact. We would lose Mexico pretty quickly. Probably. Um, and probably Cuba. South America should be okay. You never know overall. Sick of guys. Because we can't have these guys do too much around here currently. Because you guys are like this. And it's nice and all, we don't really need you like that. I'll have you guys down the base down here. Oh, is it too many? One too many? There you go. We're just going to straight up need more fuel. Do we integrate these guys yet? No. Oh, we're getting there, though. Definitely getting there. Yeah, so these are over there. If that's Iran, if it's just Iran, then we can take you guys maybe first and go straight toward the Iran only. Potentially, yes. The come. The Bundesrat established for the North German Confederation and serves the balance between Prussia and the numerous smaller states who signed up for the unification of Germany, has long been a thorn on the side and every politician and general obsessed with national efficiency. Neither representative nor competent, or only serving to uphold the necessary legislation in the name of states' rights. Um, it's been swept away. Today, the first session of the Re replacement, the Standekammer, or Chamber of the States, has been held. Economist and Mayor of Essen, Hans Lutzer, was elected as the first chairman. The Standekammer implements the modern ideological thought of corporatism to its fullest. 500 representatives from local governments, a uh, Gewerkschaftsbund, and other organizations affiliated with the National Unity Front, and appointments to represent government interests make up the chamber. The division into parliamentary groups or partisan affiliations is banned by informal groupings of militarists, conservatives, and a handful of reformers have already reformed. In theory and in propaganda, the Stand of Commerce should represent the true needs of the German state and work together in the name of this national interest. In practice, though, so, it does not work exactly like that. Lacking a cynical threat to unify itself around, the dictatorship left behind by Kurt von Schleicher is increasingly degenerating, dipping into nepotism and corruption, and the Standekammer embodies this shift more than, uh, than any other institution to a new, more inefficient age. Oh, fantastic. So after this, the regulation of system. We require a mechanism to coordinate the activities of the member states of Euro Middle Europe. We'll introduce a system of regulations that will be created with the unanimous assent of the member states, officially at least, but they will be mandatory for all member states to follow. Nuclear bombs. Sounds like fun.
Oh, I did go to war with them too. Okay. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. You guys aren't ready for war. They're still at war with two. Um, they have two million ready to go. Yeah, this is not going to be a problem. <clears throat> Good writing. Oh, I wish we could see. Because if we look at their intelligence. They still have no manpower, as we left them last time. We got a couple things here and there, but overall, this should be a pretty easy cakewalk. Um, in the meantime, what are we else going to do? There we go. Oh, throw a rock. Love it. Oh, did you expect us to destroy the Russians in this campaign? Maybe. But we got a lot of stuff to do still, too. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Help our war support out. Why not? 75. Eh, I don't really need that one. Oil must flow. The submarine arm. Our sub fleet performed admirably in the Valkyrie, even if their operations led to several diplomatic incidents. Even as we expand and reform the surface fleet, we must not forget the efficiency of the underwater operations and expand their size as well. The Electro Boot. An electric submarine, unlike previous designs, would be able to operate underwater for very long periods of time without requiring a surface. A crucial step in submarine design which would drastically enhance the stealth and offensive capabilities. We must in investigate this idea. Revitalize Rudo Tactique. During the Belt Creek, the British ships began to assemble into convoys which were pushed our U-boats into organizing into wolf packs. To counter them, yet lack of coordination led to their failure. We must outfit submarines with radios and increase central control from the naval command to make up for these shortfalls. Uh, cartelize the shipbuilding industry. We must enhance the efficiency of shipbuilding by encouraging smaller naval companies to unify into cartels. If it works for automobiles or steel, then it'll work for ships. The Deutsche Schiff and und Maschinenbau. Maschinenbau. A unification of eight private shipyards will be crowning jewel of the cartelized naval industry. Activate the Flottenverein. A Flottenverein. Ooh. Uh, the Flottenverein, or the Navy League, led by Adolf von Trotta, has campaigned in support of naval expansion since the early 1900s. And now they're expanding fleet once more, their propaganda support will be valuable yet again in three imperial shipyards. The shipyards of Kiel, Danzig, and Wilhelmshaven are known as the three imperial shipyards. As they, produced, they produce the majority of the ships for the Prussian and imperial navies. We must expand the facilities and sign new contracts with the shipyard authorities to bolster naval production there. Expand naval aviation. The cooperation, cooperation of naval and aerial forces become increasingly crucial in operations at sea. Naval bombers can support surface fleets or even conduct bold bombing raids to take down key enemy ships by themselves. We must expand our fleet's naval aviation section to accommodate this. The Empire of Ethiopia requested alliance, which is fantastic, as we were going to do that with them, but whatever. Uh, over here. The Ethiopian monarchy has been aligned with us for the past two decades, and now that they've dealt with the Somali tribes, we can now safely bring them into the fold. Uh, a partner in Ethiopia has approached us, asking for alliance between our Ethiopia and Germany. With Sudan and Somalia no longer threat to Ethiopia, we would be taking a few risks in allying, allying them, but they cannot offer us a lot either. Sure. Fantastic. I guess I guess Somalia is still here, though. Huh? I guess they're a puppet of Ethiopia, so technically they'd be under us, too. So, fantastic. Ooh, destroyers and whatnot. Huh? But yeah, we're just pushing into good old Russia here. They can't really put up a fight. Look at that. That's pretty bad. Um, unfortunately, this is still glitched. We got tons of uh, army XP and whatnot. Try to help our, our war sport, too. Feature the army. Doesn't really matter right now. Um, we've done pretty darn well, I'm not going to lie. Local agent recruitment, industrial projects, doesn't really matter, as we cartelize the shipbuilding industry. Uh, is it? Foster post-war growth. We must turn our reconstruction into new growth. The soldiers return from the front require new workplaces. While search of war operations from our defeated enemies should be invested into our economy. Should we be careful, we can create an economic miracle. Uh, I'd like to do that one, but we did also get this stuff done up here, I thought, as well. They didn't create the regulation system is passed, huh? Directorate of Enforcement. 
Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Oh, it must be 27 days of voting again. Okay. Trade deal pity modifier. Consumer goods factors. Production cap. Creates a common reserve currency for Middle Europa. Modifies the Middle Europa spirit. That's pretty good. Oh, there's a Russian Republic too. Fall of you, Catherine Burke. Well, time to do this. Peace deal. Off screen. The Russian Federation. After victory on the Eastern Front, we establish a new Russian state, but simply defeating the Russians in war is not, to not enough to ensure that it will never challenge us again. Or we'll rewrite its constitutional system, turn it Byzantine and convoluted, and promote the interests and identities of its nu numerous ethnic minorities through large territorial autonomies, so that Russia would spend more time fighting itself than plotting a rebellion. So, very, very good. We have autonomous states for all of them. Um, we do pan European optimism. The Second Valkyrie was a time of European unification. Soldiers from a dozen nations stood side by side, led by Germany. They defend a way of life, tradition, and freedom. We must not let these feelings fade. We must ensure that the future of Europe is that of brotherhood and unity, not just less bloodshed. Oh, a bill unlocks the ability to take the focus officialized session of sovereignty in the Munich Conference, huh? Continue harvesters and pesticides. The inefficient agricultural sector in Germany can be uplifted from its malaise through the application of new technology, or farms shall be turned into hyper productive, modern ones, and Germany shall once again become a breadbasket of Europe. Aid the shift to civilian production. Many industries shifted to producing material for the army during the war, but now they must transition back to civilian production. Uh, through tax rebates and subsidies, we can ensure that this process is as painless as possible. So, uh, other than that, we've got a lot of these things done here. We're not going to go to war with Japan because I just don't feel like it in this campaign because this, this lasted quite a lo quite a long time, honestly. Um, however, I am a little disappointed that we can't finish all this stuff because we can't do the regulation system because we hit the agenda to create the regulation system has passed. I guess we didn't pass it, so we can't do it. Um, oh, I guess Transmere died to the Empire of Japan. Holy cow, Japan. Uh, but they're probably being liberated right now. So, we're going to see something here. But as you can see on screen, we still have the German Empire here, Central Asia. Oh, oh, they just gave it to him. Oh, thanks for giving us our puppet, led by Pavel here, more of their own territory back. Well, all right, interesting. It's a little different. You try to go over there and kill them all off, and then you have those guys. We're the Madamin back. We have Iran here as a puppet as well. And we split up, uh, what was it, Kurdistan between the Ottomans and the Iranians because I don't want any more lag. Sorry, Kurds. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we have the Mountain Republic down here too. But they're puppet of the Ukrainians, so. But yeah, we have a fat Ukraine pulling us sideways. Overall, not bad. Ooh, I do want to show you this too. Just because, like, we don't have it. Infrastructure, industrial advisors, established a director for enforcement, which we did already. Establish a directorate, um, which will oversee with the member states and hold power to sanction states which do not follow Middle Europe regulations to the letter. Modifies the Middle Europe spirit. And already created the Europa mark. So. We don't have that option anymore to do that thing for the middle of Europe, which really sucks, but... Holy crap, Russia! So basically, the Japanese went to war for, against Transamur and gave all the territory to Russia, our puppet. Interesting. Honestly, China looks like it could be better. Republic of... Wait, why do they have a Republic of China? Oh, it's a puppet of Tibet! Oh, that's awkward and weird. Oh, Tibet's now the leader. But hey, I think we'll probably end the campaign here. I mean, we've done as much as we pretty much can. It's pretty laggy. But overall, you know, starting the first couple episodes, it was kind of like, oh my god, what's actually going to happen since, uh, uh, you know, we had all the economic crises and everything was falling apart. But in the end, we're in North America. We're in all of Latin, a good chunk of Latin America. West Indies Union. Oh, Copart Spirit Spirit. Hello? Suriname, huh? Uh, a good chunk of Africa is, uh, excuse me, stuck with the Entente, but the rest of Africa is literally us. Central, all of Central Africa is under us. We have uh, most of Eastern Africa. We don't have the Suez still, but, you know, whatever. We could easily take these guys out, which would eliminate a lot of these guys, and then eventually we could crush them here, and we could crush the Middle East. But we literally have almost all of Europe, ex except for, you know, these two islands here in Portugal. I mean, that's, that's huge. Germany has been the center of the world. I mean, of course, it's almost like a TNO world. Except no Nazis in this one. Yeah. Uh, the Japan did very well, very well, very well as well. Almost e eating all of Asia, literally having all of Asia in their sphere, except for Tibet and their version of China and Afghanistan, which I would kill off too. Um, but we did get a, 
Australia as well in the end. So overall, I'm very pleased with this campaign turnout. I really love what the devs have done here for the rework of Kaiserreich for the German Empire. Um, I'm excited to try it again sometime, not immediately, so we could form the National People's Union someday, as well as do the second wave of parliamentarianization. But that'll be for another campaign. But if you enjoyed the campaign, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day.